Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verba Noun. Happy Copyright Week! In a brief departure from our regularly scheduled programming, and I use the term loosely, this week we are talking to the Director of Global Learning for the Creative Commons, Dr. Cable Green. Here's why. A few days ago, Dustin from Smarter Every Day posted this video on his channel on the topic of freebooting, a phenomenon where people will go onto YouTube, pull videos off, and then re-upload them to other websites, usually without giving credit to the people who originally made the videos. This isn't just a matter of decency, however. First, it pulls ad revenue from the video's creators and gives it to the new host. Second, often it scrubs the video of any kind of attribution, disregarding the artist's right to maintain control over something they've created. I won't go into the details, instead I highly recommend that you take a few minutes and watch Destin's video, right here. Go ahead. I can wait. All done? Okay, now, back to the task at hand. I interviewed Cable because he gave a lecture on the future of open educational resources while I was still at the University of Hawaii. It was so great, and it played more than a small role in selling me on the idea of being an evangelist, as it were, for using tech to get folks education. It's also the reason that all of my videos are licensed under the Creative Commons license. Fun fact. So when I got back to California, I reached out to him to see if we could meet up during my trip. A couple months later, he and I met up at his home in Washington to chat, hence this interview. In this first part, he and I are going to talk about the Creative Commons and how it can benefit YouTubers specifically, while the second part is going to be more about Creative Commons just in general. So, let's take a peek. My name is Cable Green. I'm the Director of Global Learning at Creative Commons. Uh, what do I do? My job is to help everybody on the planet get access to high quality education and research materials. Uh, and so I spend a lot of my time teaching people about CC licensing, teaching people about uh, open educational resources. I also work with governments and foundations around the world to help them to um, require their grantees to share what they built. Um, and then I also work with technology companies to uh, make it easy for them to adopt Creative Commons licensing on their platforms. So I should probably say Creative Commons is a nonprofit global organization. And our job on the internet is to make it not only legal, but simple to share. So CC is all about keep your copyright, keep your ownership, uh, but then also put an open license on your work so you can share under the terms and conditions that you choose. What can you tell me about the relationship between YouTube and the Creative Commons? So one of the features of YouTube is that you can openly license your videos. So Creative Commons worked with, uh, worked with YouTube so that now when somebody, when a creator, uploads a video to YouTube, they can either choose the standard YouTube license or they can choose the Creative Commons attribution license. This is important for a couple reasons. One is usually when people put something up on YouTube, what they mean to do is to share it with the world for free and they want their video to be seen as many times. But a lot of people also want their videos to be, uh, to be reused and to be revised and remixed sometimes. And so one of the cool things that YouTube did was they allowed you to add a Creative Commons attribution license to your video. When you do that, two things happen. One is that it's, it's marked, so you'll see it says this, this video is licensed under a CC BY license. The other th thing that happens is that your video is put into a space in YouTube with other CC BY videos that can be remixed. And YouTube has a video editing to, uh, tool as part of the platform that allows you to remix your CC BY license video with, with anybody else's. And so that's kind of neat, especially when you're talking about educational resources, because a teacher or a professor or a learner out there in the world might want to take a little bit of this and a little bit of that video, and they can put it together and create something new and add their own content. And you're able to do that when something's openly licensed, like a YouTube video. Can you talk a little bit about using the standard YouTube licensing versus using the Creative Commons licensing? So first of all, if uh, anybody used a YouTube video, uh, it's just good practice to give attribution. So let's say that it's a standard YouTube license. Um, if you use somebody's work and it's under uh, uh, all rights reserved copyright, it's under that standard license. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, it's proper. It's a, <laughs> it's a nice thing to do to give proper attribution and to cite somebody. Um, it's inappropriate not to. Uh, if there's a Creative Commons attribution license on it, um, you're actually legally required to provide attribution. Um, so one of the interesting things that happens when people put Creative Commons licenses on YouTube videos or on Flickr images or on textbooks or whatever, um, 
is that they're more likely to give attribution than if it was all rights reserved. Because, I mean, if you think about the web, right, and if some, you find something on the web and you find it's for free, what do we do? Well, we just take it, right? People make copies. It's easy to download. It's easy to link to stuff. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people don't give proper attribution. Um, when somebody sees a Creative Commons license, um, they a lot. if you don't know what Creative Commons is, people might go, huh, what's that? And they'll click on it. And then the nice little license deed pops up and it says, you know, you are free to do the following things under the following conditions. Here's how you give proper attribution. And what that is, is that's an educational moment. So for somebody who may not understand copyright law, never thought about it, never like the idea of attribution or citing somebody is a totally new concept that seeing that Creative Commons license is actually a learning moment. And so uh, ironically, or uh, interestingly enough, uh, if you use a Creative Commons license in your work, you're, I think you're more likely to get attribution than if you're using you know, a standard uh, YouTube uh, video license. I mean, speaking for myself, I, I didn't really think hard about proper citation and attribution until I was a doctoral student and I got into doing research. And I, you know, in your papers, you have plagiarism is a death knell if mm -hmm. you're in college, right? You plagiarize, you get kicked out, especially if a PhD program. Um, it's the end of your academic career. And so the idea of citing just it was baked into you. And so, you know, when I learned about Creative Commons, I was like, oh, attribution? Like, that's citing piece of cake. I know what that is. Most people in the world have not gone through PhD programs, right? Or, or been formally trained in research and citation. And most people in the world don't read peer-reviewed journals on a regular basis. <laughs> and so it doesn't surprise me that, you know, and a lot of stuff just gets used on the web uh, without without proper citation. Um, that, that That is, um, I, keep, I hear this story over and over. I don't have hard data. It's all anecdotal. But... A lot, of, a lot of times people tell me, you know, the moment I started using CC licenses, uh, the, the attribution of my works went way up, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good, right? It's, if, if you're, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're sharing, you'd like to have your stuff be used, that's a positive thing. Um, if you're being attributed to people who are linking back to you, you can see that in, you know, Google Analytics or just in Google searches, so you can visually see links coming to you. Um, a lot of platforms have analytics baked in, so you can see that. And then... The other thing that's just pleasant for people is that when you use a CC license, a lot of times people will contact the author and say, thank you. So when we built the Open Course Library here in Washington, um, our faculty were looking globally for open courseware and open textbooks to use in our community colleges that was already open educational resources so that we didn't have to build it. You know, if we could find a really great intro to stats book, why would we build one? Like, there's no reason. It saved us months and you know, thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, and so when we found something like that that was just what we needed or almost and it was under a permissive CC license, we'd, we'd reach out and say, hey, thanks. Like, you just saved us three months of work. We wanted to say thank you. Like, can we send you a case of beer? <laughs> um, so, you know, you put an open license, good stuff happens. So what's in it for me as a YouTuber to use a Creative Commons license? Yeah, so, so if you use YouTube, you're, you've already made a choice to, to put your video out to the world for no cost. Okay, so, and, and presumably, if you're putting a video on YouTube, you want as many people, you want hits, you want as many views as you could possibly get, uh, especially if you've got a channel. And, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? You want to impact, you want to reach as many people as you possibly can. Um, if, if this is a business for you, the more eyeballs, the better. Uh, if you just are sharing, uh, the more eyeballs, the better. Um, you also want... Um, you, you, you don't want to just be viewed, you want to you want your videos to go viral, right? Yeah, you want your videos embedded in other people's sites. Um, you maybe want your videos to be remixed. You want parts of your videos in other works because you know that's going to extend your reach. So once you get into the sort of that second tier of reuse and remix, etc., and your videos being embedded somewhere, somewhere else, you absolutely want and deserve attribution as well. And so... Um, some people will attribute your YouTube videos if it's just under the standard YouTube license, if they know to do that. Now, most news sources and journalists, they know how to get proper attribution, and they will. But your average blogger might not. Um, and they're going to presume that linking to your YouTube video is enough attribution. We know it's not. It's nice to have a nice byline that says, here's the author, here's the title of the video, and here's a, here's a link. Um, if you put a Creative Commons attribution license on your YouTube video, you are it's one more signal that you're sending to the world that not only this video is free, but here are the legal permissions I give you to use the video. And so a lot of people are going to 
a lot of people who don't know what Creative Commons is are going to click on that link on under your YouTube video, and they're going to read the license. The license is going to be very clear. It's going to say these are the you know, we've got these rights. These are the terms and conditions, and you have to give attribution legally. What you've just done by adding a CC BY license to your video is you've significantly increased the chances that you're going to be properly attributed, and that's that's really important. You deserve to get credit for your video. The adding a license ensures that you do. Would you suggest YouTube EDU folks adding CC licenses to their videos? And what's your reasoning? Sure. So, yes, I, I always suggest Creative Commons <laughs> licenses. Uh, uh, it will, well, I should qualify that. I always suggest adding a Creative Commons license to your work if your intention is to share it. Uh, and if you want to maximize the impact and the use and reuse of your work. If those are your goals, then you absolutely want to put an open license on it. If your goal is to, you know, have a smaller audience and charge for access and restrict uh, people's ability to make changes to your work, then maybe a CC license isn't the best thing. Um, given given your question, it sounds like they uh, uh, they certainly want to impact K twelve education and and uh, early childhood reading and other topics which are really important for preparing people for a successful education and, and a successful life and. Um, and, and putting a Creative Commons license on it is going to maximize access to those resources. Uh, to give you an example, so here we are sitting in Washington State. My state spends, just for K-12, uh, about $130 million a year on educational resources. That's a lot of money, right? Every year, and we only, we're only we talking about 1 million school kids. Not very many people. My kids are two of them. Uh, for that $130 million, we get really, really lousy results. Uh, the textbooks, the curriculum is on average 10 years out of date. It's only paper, no digital formats. Uh, the learners are not allowed to keep those resources at the end of the year. So think about that, right? That's that's nuts. And we were talking about Wikipedia earlier. Um, is anybody going to take Wikipedia away from you? No. <laughs> you can keep it forever. Uh, if somebody gives you an open textbook or an open course that's under a Creative Commons license, nobody can ever take that away from you. It's yours forever. So we all, you know, we have libraries in our homes. We have books. Those books are yours. Nobody can walk into your house and steal those and take them away. And yet that's what my state does with educational resources. And it's not just this state. It's every other state, too. Um, and then if these kids if the kids lose these paper books, which we're going to take back from them at the end of the year, but if they lose them during second grade, the parents have to shell out a bunch of money to replace the book, and then the kids have to give it back at the end of the year anyway. And the things weigh a lot, so the kids are you know trekking 30-pound backpacks back and forth to school. It's it's crazy. It's a terrible, terrible system. So if you know if YouTube, Khan Academy, and others others like them can come up with ways to provide educational resources that are under a Creative Commons license, not only can people access them for free, but they actually have the legal rights then to keep a copy of those videos, which is very exciting. Uh, and they can make that part of their learning library. They also have the permission to use parts of those videos or remix those videos. And so one of the things that's important for YouTube channel uh, creators to know about educators, when I say educators, I mean teachers in K-12 or uh, professors in universities, is that uh, they, they change stuff, right? They take parts of things. They, they synthesize the world into what they need in the classroom. Uh, and the odds that they're going to take your entire YouTube channel and just hand it to their students and say, here, your curriculum is this YouTube channel, that's pretty low. Right? More likely what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to say, oh, I really like that video or I like that video. They're going to take parts of your channel. Uh, and when they look at your videos, what they're probably going to want to do is take parts of your video. And so if you enable, it, enable them, empower them, uh, communicate to them that that's okay by putting a CC BY license on it, the odds of them using your work go way up. Mm -hmm. And if what you want is impact, you want, you want use, you're going to increase that by using a CC license. So pretty good stuff, right? Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that what inspired me to push this video through now is the issue of freebooting that Destin raised. To be honest, I don't know if publishing videos under a CC license is the solution to that problem, but I do see it as a critical first step in getting YouTube EDU into the legitimate learning resources inside and outside of the classroom. And I certainly agree that having Creative Commons license has a good chance of at least making a person think twice about blatantly ripping off a video while also letting someone like a teacher know that you made something specifically to be shared. 
If you have a learner that uses open learning resources, then it's easier to throw something from YouTube into those resources if it's under the CC license, because then they know it's created to be shared. If there were, say, a crash course workbook or other learning materials, teachers are more likely to use them and drive more views to the channel if that workbook is licensed to be copied and shared for free with proper attribution in a classroom environment. But hey, that's enough for me. What do you think? Do you see Creative Commons as a useful tool for YouTube EDU? How about education in general? Let me know in the comments below or on the social media of your choice. And now, if you're ready, go ahead and click next below to hear a little bit more. Keeble's going to tell us about how the idea of open makes pretty good business sense if that's what you're fixing to do. And then he'll go over a little bit about the organization's relationship with Wikipedia. Go check it out.